Good afternoon, everyone, all the way from Thailand. Today is a special day because it's the last day of our Rains Retreat. The Rains Retreat is a three month period where Buddhist monks, we stay in one location. We come back to our basic foundation to be with ourselves, to do our meditation, to learn the teachings and the wisdom and put everything on the side first. But this period is to come back to be by yourselves and to come and to recharge. Another reason why this is so important because this morning we just finished our ceremony and this also signifies that for the Buddhist monk we're one year older. So for myself now I'm officially six years old as a Buddhist monk so I just want to share this good um, experience this good deeds with all of you out there so with this tradition now is then I want to share the wisdom that I learned from this year this year is a bit different because your first five years as a Buddhist monk you're a new monk and you're training yourself and when you reach or when you pass the five-year mark you have a little bit more freedom and that's what we did last year where from or with that wisdom we got a chance to travel to teach to run big uh, mass events uh, we went to singapore to malaysia went to uh, california chicago pennsylvania um, atlanta georgia so th these different states but again coming back to reflect on this year uh, this reflection would be so helpful for many of you because all of you are in that outside world you have a lot of work that you need to do a living that you need to make and for buddhist monks for us while we do train ourselves we also go out into the world to help others as well so i hope this wisdom can be helpful for you but these are six tips that i wanted to share with you that i learned from this year that may be helpful and applied to your life but in no particular order let's get started take time to reflect and reassess for many of you out there you are working very hard you're hustling, <laughs> you're going after your dreams, you're trying to pursue your career, and that's wonderful. Uh, also from this, we try to pursue opportunities. Opportunities lead to more opportunities, and one of the things that we can forget is that we get lost in our work. And when we get lost in our work, then our mind starts to wander and many times we can lose this mindfulness and for me coming back to reflect is important because we got to answer a very important question where are you trying to go <laughs> what are you trying to do and what is even the end goal when we work so hard like i said our head is down we can get lost in the work and sometimes people will sway us our ideas will sway us, new trends will sway us, money will sway us, opportunities will sway us, and we're just going and going and going. We take on new projects, we do new things, and this will continue to spiral. And I get an uh, opportunity to meet with so many people where without being mindful, they're just driving, they're just pushing forward, one day they look up and wait <laughs> is this even the life that i want is this the lifestyle are these still my values the friends the co-workers the environment that i'm around this lifestyle wait do i even want that and this is such an important question because we got to make sure we're still in alignment the original plan, the original intention that you had set out for yourself in the beginning was quite pure, was quite clear. And from doing the work and from going and going and going and pushing and being productive, we can lose sight on that. So this first advice is really that one, it's very normal. And secondly, just take time. 
Take time to get still, take time to get clear, and reflect back this past month, this past year, this past decade. Hmm, wow. Is this where I wanna go? Is this who I wanna be? Am I still on the right track? And this is a question that you need to dig deep. Uh, you need to be honest and be truthful because when we're not clear, it will harm us in the long run. But I would just say that take time, again, to reflect and reassess that the goals that you have for yourself in this moment, are you still in alignment? Put yourself in the right environment. Many people have such big dreams and big goals and nothing wrong with that. And the way I see people is like a building. And the bigger your dream, the bigger your goals, the bigger the building that you want, what is required? And what is required is you need a strong foundation. You need a deep foundation so it can hold up. Another word for this is we got to talk about sustainability for you. And so many people are struggling with mental health issues. They're having suffering. They're not at peace. And for you to continue on with the path that you're going, we need to address this issue. Is the environment that you have for yourself sustain, sustainable for you? And can you go the long distance at this rate? Some people are so stressed and they're not even sleeping. Two hours, my friends, <laughs> is, is not enough. Coffee and energy drinks alone is not going to get you through this. Um, when our health is declining, you're making so much more money, but yet mm, the physical health, the hygiene, your sleep hygiene, your mental hygiene, if those things are at risk, then the probability of us continuing to be successful, it will continue to decrease. So my advice for you is take a look at your current environment. Is it sustainable? If not, then start to make changes where it honors you and it honors your nature, it honors your value and where you're trying to go. And for myself is my first goal, my first priority is to be a Buddhist monk. And while I want to do great work out there, I need to make sure that my current lifestyle, my current environment supports my practice of being a monk. That means I need meditation. Whatever work I have, meditation is the heart and meditation is the key. So I need to prioritize that. I need time to reflect. I need time to learn wisdom and to learn in general. This is important for me. I need to be alone so I can contemplate, so I can be with myself and to hear myself. And this lifestyle is so important. So take the time to look at your life and see is it sustainable? If it's sustainable, keep going. If it's not, then start to make these changes. Create your own game. When you're doing work outside, people have a way of doing things. Uh, people will tell you that this is how things have been done. So you need to do it this way. And what I came to realize is that you don't have to play their games. You can create the conditions for your own life. You can create the conditions to support where you're trying to go. And I'll use a personal example is for me, I love sharing wisdom that helps people who are suffering. And I like doing it in a platform and in an environment where it's through videos. And because I have this presence online, I will get so many suggestions from people of what I need to do. And people will tell me that 
I need to try this platform because you can make four second videos and you can get three trillion views. <laughs> you have to do your videos this way. You have to teach this way. You have to speak this way because everyone else is doing it. But sure, everyone else can do it. Sure, there may be a formula for that. But for me, is that's not my goal and that's not where I'm trying to go. If you do this, you'll be famous. You'll get more views. I don't care. <laughs> Again, that is not my goal. People will tell me that I need to do interviews. And I get so many requests from people wanting to do podcasts and interviews. And for me is while everyone is doing that for my nature, for my peace of mind is I choose not to because it doesn't support where I'm trying to go. And what I wanted to share is that many people are going down that path and again no judgment but coming back to you is you don't have to go down that path you don't have to play those games but come back to see where are you trying to go and if you want to make good art if you want to make an impact while living a peaceful sustainable lifestyle where it doesn't change who you are then you can play another game. Not all, not all games are created equally. And for me is I want to set the conditions for my life. And the path that is well-traveled is not always the best path. So just take the time to reflect wisely and come back to yourself and just know that there is an option where you can create your own games and you can create your own rules that will have a lasting and happy effect for your life. Always protect your mind. In life, things are always changing. How many of you have experience where people love you? People love everything about you one day and then another day, now they don't like you. <laughs> People's emotions will change and fluctuate. People's intention towards you will change and fluctuate. And how many times where, if anyone can relate to this, where you take care of yourself, you're in a good mood, you went on a retreat, maybe you had a spa day, you're fully relaxed, you feel so good. Someone says something and now your mind completely shift. And this will happen periodically. And one of the things that I learned from this year is that people will change. Feelings will change. Everything in the outside world will change. Instead of trying to figure out what is wrong with this person, what is wrong with this situation? One tool that I got from my brother Monk, he pulled me to the side because I was having a little uh, attachment issue <laughs> with a situation that I was involved in. But the advice he gave me was so kind. And he, and he told me this, remember, Venerable Nick, impermanence. Everything will start to change, but what you can uh, have more control over is pay attention to yourself. Know you and pay attention to your mind at all time. Is your mind still? And if your mind is not still, what took it away from stillness? Always keep your eyes on you. And when you can do this, you'll be so much happier and you will be so much more peaceful. But this was such a big learning lesson for me is because I know the outside environment will continue to change. If I attach to things, my mood will fluctuate. My mind will fluctuate and just like a pond or an ocean, it will create ripples and waves. But for me, it's no nope. knowing this wisdom, I'm not going to attach outside. It is what it is. Things will shift, but I will keep myself still. 
I will continue to train myself if it sways outside. No problem. It's normal. Come back. Come back to the stillness and continue to take care of your mind. If it fluctuates, do something. Go for a walk. Talk to a friend. Utilize your coping skills. Get out in nature. And then bring your mind back to something that is peaceful. But this is something that you can control. And if you can do this, again, your life will be so much happier. Don't take things personally. When we take things personally, many times our feelings will get hurt. When our feelings get hurt, we will get discouraged. When we will get discouraged, then it will lead to wanting to quit, wanting to give up completely, and it does not help us. So for me, I would say to use this wisdom. People will say things, people will give you feedback. Some things are helpful, some things are not, and I just take it with a grain of salt. Some people may want to give you feedback. Some people may have an agenda behind that feedback. Some people will get whatever the reason is for me, it, it doesn't matter. But more of when I do receive that critique or that feedback, I do listen and I take in as much as I can. I try to see things from their perspective and I just know it's a perspective coming from them. If it's helpful for me and I can utilize this wisdom, I fully take it. If it doesn't apply yet, then it's okay too. And I just, again, receive that information and I move on. Why I'm sharing this with you is because when we start to take things personally and our feelings get hurt, it creates this just hairline crack in the foundation. And if it continues to expand, it will keep growing. We will start to have more negative emotions. The negative emotions leads to negative thinking. And like I said, it can lead to us quitting and giving up. So then what do we do with this information and how do I apply it? And for me, I would say it's just be aware of this concept that to not take things personally. So when it does come up, just be aware that, okay, this is happening. And secondly, try to immediately or as quickly as you can find a way to let it go. Don't wait to do good. In the monastery, we're always taught to do good things. Meditation is key and this is the biggest gift you can give to yourself and to your mind. Another thing is doing good deeds. When you do good deeds, like donations, uh, giving of your time and compassion to other people, this will produce good energy to support your life. And one of the things that we encounter on our experience is that people are so busy with their lives. And the response to doing good is they'll always say, I'll come back to it. Let me be rich, then I'll come back to meditate. I'll come back to do these good things. And what we find is that if you do not do it now, by the time you have the opportunity to, it might be even more challenging and it might be even too late. Let me give you an example. Regarding meditation, knowing that it's so good for you, many people will say, oh, I'll wait later. And then they get older, time passes, by the time that they're going to come back to themselves and practice meditation, now their health is declined. And maybe you won't even be able to sit, but our physical body is so important. So while you're young, while you're healthy, while you're able to be mobile, take time to meditate as much as you can. Take time to do as much good as you can in this outside world. Use this physical body while it's young and healthy. And our master always teaches us, uh, go. While you have the health, while you have the time, 
while you have the resources, if you can do good, do it now. And you can do it simultaneously as you're making a living for your life. You can support your material world, but also take time to support your spiritual world while you can. So regarding doing good, do not wait. Just go. So there you have it. These are the six things that came up for me this year. I hope my reflection, uh, this wisdom can be helpful for you and can relate in some way. But as always, I just want to say thank you to all of you for being part of this journey. I can't believe how fast time is flying by and already six years in the monastery. Uh, to be able to train myself and to share this wisdom week by week with you. I don't take this lightly. And again, I'm so honored. All of the good things that I've done so far during my monk life and in this lifetime in general, I just want to share this good energy with all of you. But as always, I just wanted to send you my blessings and greetings to you all. Hope you're doing well and we'll talk again soon. Satu.